Can you spot the fake? Deepfakes, videos faked by AI, seem deceptively real. And they're a serious threat to society. In order to expose deepfakes, two experts are embroiled in a battle in the name of science. While one of them fakes, the other unmasks. We met up with both of them. Deepfakes, our topic today on SHIFT. Some deepfakes are funny, others are really mean. It's fascinating how researchers can manipulate videos with the help of artificial intelligence. I tried out what it was like to control someone else's face. Check me out as Scarlett Johansson, Bruce Lee, or Vladimir Putin. It's pretty impressive to see how easy that was with the right technology and in real time too. I don't even want to imagine what could happen if a fake president declared war. How can we stop fake news or deep fakes? That's what scientists are asking themselves too. We met the two most renowned deep fake experts in the US. Their academic competition is advancing research on the issue. Most consider Hao Li to be the best deep fake artist in the world. The German computer scientist teaches at the University of Southern California and manipulates videos for science. You know, as hard as it sounds, we're also trying to advance it in order to be able to detect them, right? Because if you don't understand how they are being generated, if you don't have the capability of generating realistic effects, there is no way to eff effectively detect those either. His opponent, Hani Farid, uncovers deepfakes. A professor at the University of California, Berkeley, he's a world-leading expert in digital forensics. I think the biggest obstacle in detection is that the field is moving so quickly. Um, every three months, you see new advances in the creation of fake content. So our adversary, if I can call them that, is not static. They are changing, and they are changing really, really fast. So we start developing these new forensic technology, and all of a sudden, there's a whole new way of creating deep fakes, and now we have to worry about that as well. It's crazy to see how quickly this technology is advancing. We're used to it from photos. Technically, we're all able to alter them at home with basic software. But videos? A few years ago, moving images were proof that something had really happened. Deepfakes have taken this to another level. There's growing fear that wrong information is circulating without anyone noticing, especially when it comes to big events like the US presidential elections. Whether it's photos or videos, fake news isn't new, but it's getting better, as both experts warn. We've always had fake news from the day of the printing press being um, 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 developed. But here's the difference. We, this, what's new here is not we can create fake news, we can create fake images, we can create fake videos. What's new here is the sophistication with which we can do it, the democratization of access so almost anybody on the internet can do it. But here's the real issue, instant global publication. The most scary, scary thing is that it feels like you're stealing someone's identity and you can put anything you want into their mouth and you can make them do whatever you want. So far, deepfake technology is used mainly for one purpose, porn. One study shows that this amounts to 96% of the deepfakes online today. Stars like Emma Watson and Scarlett Johansson were some of the first prominent victims. Their faces were superimposed onto pornographic videos with the help of AI. A program enabling such fakes was first uploaded to the online forum Reddit. The anonymous user called Deepfakes was quickly banned. But other users took over his software's code and kept expanding it. Today, similar software is still freely available online. The name is a combination of deep, as in deep learning technology, and fake. But how exactly do deepfakes work? How hard is it to make them look real? Deepfake expert Hao Li explained it to me in Los Angeles. Many deep fakes are based on so-called GANs, algorithms that are unsupervised, meaning they learn without human guidance. Instead, they're trained with raw data, real photos, for example. You're not modeling anything, you're just collecting a bunch of faces. All you need is to make sure they're aligned like this and you crop the face right. And you know, manually, you would try to make sure that there's a balanced set of different lighting conditions, different expressions, 
and it just learns it by itself. This is what is so powerful about these deep learning based approaches. The novelty in this approach is that two algorithms work together. One generates and the other checks. Almost like how Lee and Hani Farid. It's like an arms race, right? You have a generator that tries to generate uh, some images in the beginning, you know, it's just like some random pixels. But then what you try to do is you tell, instead of telling it where to improve, like traditional supervised learning, you just tell it, no, it's not good enough. So you would improve and improve again until the, you would fool the discriminator so that the discriminator can't tell anymore what a difference is and then it itself improves. The algorithms work on their own without human assistance. I am so excited to live in the White House. This one minute long video took four days to make. It's a deep fake generated by Hao Lee and his team. To create it, they use face swap technology on videos of comedians imitating US politicians. For this deep fake, the algorithms were fed 5,000 images. But there's no secret recipe for the perfect deep fake yet. Sometimes we don't know why we add more data and it gets worse. Uh, so there's a little bit of black magic and, you know, uh, cooking over there. We've all got photos on social media, right? I think it's pretty scary to think that somebody could use my pictures to make a fake video of me. That's why methods to flag deepfakes quickly and reliably are becoming more and more important. Tech giants like Facebook and Microsoft have launched the Deepfake Detection Challenge with a price of nearly 1 million euros. Here at DW, we've developed a verification program, Truly Media, which can help analyze digital content. There's also a number of specialized startups on the issue. Hani Farid is an expert in digital forensics. He uses how Lee's deepfakes to fine tune his verification programs. And he's always on the lookout for the best way to use AI. The AI approach is exactly what you think it is. You get a bunch of real videos, you get a bunch of fake videos, and you teach a machine learning system to tell the difference. But that's a sensitive subject. Since deepfakes are also created with machine learning, a detection tool could just as well be used to generate better fakes. But Hani Farid goes beyond the ordinary approach. Instead of just relying on AI, he and his team analyze videos to identify people's unique facial features. We try to understand how do people move? How does the mouth move? How does the expressions change? In part because we think that those are properties of the video that the machine learning can't currently analyze. And that means we're less vulnerable to counterattack. So anytime you build forensic techniques, you always have to ask yourself, how will this be um, used to make better fakes? This grid visualizes aspects such as head movement, line of vision, and facial expressions. In order to spot differences, Honey Farid compares a real video with a video that was possibly altered. This method detects about 96% of faked footage. One possible use for this might be to integrate detection software into social networks' algorithms in the future. Google has already provided scientists with some 3,000 manipulated videos to help improve deepfake detectors. To make these 3,000 videos, Google employed 28 actors and then manipulated the images with algorithms. So tech giants seem to be taking deepfakes very seriously. And it's no surprise. Experts predict the damage caused by manipulated audio and video files could range as high as nearly a quarter billion euros in 2020. And what's worse, there's no perfect program to help us detect deepfakes yet. But Every new technology has a good side too, right? Deepfakes also offer a few exciting possibilities for the future. Imagine you can have a customized movie where when you download a movie, you can say, I want this actor or this actress to be in the movie instead of who it is. That's sort of neat. This is a huge opportunity for the movie industry. Soon, visual effects could be much cheaper to produce. But so far, deepfake technology cannot create images in the same high resolution as movies. But it's good enough for YouTube videos. Number one of my friendship. Which is how Nicolas Cage got cast in The Godfather. Deep fake technology could also bring celebrities back to life, like the Spanish painter Salvador Dali. It is good to be back. In the Dali Museum in Florida, visitors can even pose for a picture with him. Ooh la la!
I think one of the most interesting ones is in Hollywood studios for creating dubbed movies. So if we have a movie that is uh, filmed in German and we want to listen to it in English, um, you create a lip sync deep fake where the person now it looks like they're speaking English. That's super cool. Like this awareness campaign in nine languages. Malaria isn't just any disease. It's the deadliest disease there's ever been. Se dice que ha matado más de la mitad de la población que ha existido. Billion million tan murit qui. Wa ma zala taqtulu tiflan kull daqiqatayn. To make it, the creators animated a 3D model of David Beckham's face. Wow, now that's cool. Soon you might be able to watch me host shift in Hindi or Kiswahili completely in sync and perhaps even live. It's just a matter of time before we're able to manipulate 4K videos in real time. It's just up to computers getting a little bit faster. But back to more serious matters. People around the world need to know about this new technology. How Lee presented his face swap studio at the World Economic Forum in Davos. The most important thing is actually that people know that this is possible, right? Uh, if they wouldn't know, then they could easily be fooled. Uh, if they know that there are uh, ways to actually create video manipulations that are extremely uh, believable, then you know we, we will have some way of protection. Honestly, I have to say that both experts, Hani Farid and Hao Li, have managed to calm my worries about deepfakes a little. Fake news has always been a huge problem, not just today. But the perfect technology is not even necessary for it. The more people are aware of deepfakes and the possibilities to manipulate videos, the better they can deal with misinformation. Is something true or false? That's not a question of deepfakes. What do you think? Are you scared of manipulated videos? Or is this all just a storm in a teacup? Let us know what you think. You can do this on YouTube too. There you can find a video of me getting my very own 3D avatar in Hao Lee's lab in Los Angeles. I even sat in the same chair as Will Smith. The hardest part was I had to make 26 different faces. Check it out on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.